I am embarrassed to report that it has been exactly two years and 37 days since I did a My Chemical Romance song. That's not okay. I promise. <laughs> but luckily, Chris Stanton came through with a great request for The World is Ugly, the campfire version. Thanks for saving the day, Chris. Here we go. For the intro, I'm going to go through the broad strokes first, and then I'm going to show you a couple of little tasty things you can add to it if you want to hearken that lead line. It's going to be D, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, B minor, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But for the last two beats of that measure, here's a special chord. It's B minor 7 with an A in the bass. To make a normal B minor 7, you take your pinky off, exposing the G string second fret. That's an A note, so anywhere you put an A in a B minor chord makes it a B minor 7, but if you put it in the low end of the chord, you have to tell whoever's going to play the chord that it's in the bass. Hence, B minor 7 with an A in the bass. That's written B minor 7 slash A and pronounced B minor 7 with an A in the bass. All that to say, what we're going to do is take our pointer finger off, and I'm going to mute that E string with my thumb so that we don't hear it. In context, B minor 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, A in the bass. you can add the tasties. Now, I did as much as I could, and it's not exactly, exactly note for note, but you just can't do the chords and every note exactly right. So this, again, will hearken it, and it'll be great. Start with D, but rather than an F sharp note on the E string second fret, we want an A all the way up there. So I'm switching my fingers around. Pointer finger on G, middle finger on B, pinky on A. Now adding A to a D chord doesn't change the D-ness of the chord. Good thing there's no P chord because, look, there's an A on the G string second fret, so we can add A's wherever we want and it's still a D chord. Anyways, the E string is going to go 5, open 2. Now, on the B minor chord, I'm going to start with that same high note. Yeah, this is a B minor 7 with now two A's in it. Still a B minor 7, but my pinky's going to go from E5 to B5 to where it goes. all the way up to that A note again, followed by A, and then the B string, third fret, and then everything else after that's just going to be normal with the B minor and then the A in the bass. Here we go. First, we're going to add another something with a something else in the bass. It's going to be G major 7 with an F sharp in the bass. Now, there is no F sharp note in a G chord, so adding one changes the chord. In fact, it makes it a G major 7, and the F sharp we're going to add, of course, is in the bass, the E string 2nd fret, and it's going to serve as the walk down. You'll see. Verse. B minor. It's our walk down with the A. do that to hearken that thing that happens. We can't do that and the chord, of course. So on the B minor, I'm going to take my middle finger off to start. And then B minor, A in the bass, and then we're going to do the same thing on the G chord. Again, the lead guitar goes. So we're going to start with just the E string third fret, 
pointer finger is going to go on the B string, second fret, I'm muting the A string with my middle finger so that we don't have to worry about it, and the baby E string is just going to get muted with all the stuff that's going on down there, and the B string is going to go two, three, two, three, two, oh, which should remind you of... I digress. Here's the verse. B minor. special B minor, then A in the bass, special G, A. You repeat the B minor section with the A in the bass, then special G, A into the chorus now. Music teachers can only talk on beat, <laughs> which has some of the intro noodlies. Do those if you want. I'm not going to do those now. I'm going to opt instead to follow the bass walk that happens. Uh, I'm just adding one thing. Start with D. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I want a C sharp in the bass. That's D major seven with a C sharp in the bass now. If that pinky thing gives you fits, Think ahead, do D like this instead, mute the baby E string, and now your ring finger can grab that A string fourth fret. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, E minor, walking down just the same. Seven, eight, G, two, three, four, E minor, two, three, four, let B ring out, B minor, and you're into the next verse. The second chorus is different, however. It's the last chorus in question. There's only two chori in this song. And on that note, if you do D this way and let the baby E string ring out, that's good too. So you don't even have to mute it if you don't want to. D, two, three, four, five, six, C sharp in the bass, B minor, walking down, five, six, Repeat from B minor two more times. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, G, two, three, four, one, two. One more time. B minor. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, G, two, three, four, A, two, three, four. And then we're what into what I'm calling the post chorus. Because it happens after the chorus. You get to start making names up when there's more than just intro, verse, chorus, and bridge. Anyways, the whole rest of the song is chorus-like stuff. In fact, none of the chori are the same. You could say there's five chori in this song or no chori in the... The post-chorus is the first eight measures of the verse repeated over and over and over again. B minor. A in the bass. to what I'm calling the bridge, which happens at three minutes and 33 seconds, and it's the same as the intro, but we're gonna repeat the last four measures, the B minor, A in the bass, G, A, two times, and it starts chill. You can add those noodlies if you want. I'm going to. start with one measure of D, and then two beats each of G and A, but I kind of felt like being Mr. Fancy Pants here, and this doesn't happen in the song, but if you want to do it, you can play G major 7 here, it's nice. Not with the F sharp in the bass, rather with the F sharp on the musical top there. So from D, your middle finger goes to E3, and your pointer finger goes down to the other E2. I'm also going to add the 
from the lead line G, A, twice. Wow, that was a lot. It's always those songs that are several different iterations of just a few chords that are always the most confusing for me anyways, which is why when I'm figuring these things out, I make chord charts. This was a three-pager. And did you know that for just $1 a month, <laughs> go to my Patreon and you can get all my chord charts for $1 a month. So if that was a lot and you think this could help, I'll see you there. Everybody else, thank you so much for being here. I hope that was fun and helpful, and I will see you next time with more stuff. Goodbye.